So first, let's just watch the video on what this Via Ferrata exactly is. And then at the end, I will show you, uh, fly in some maps so you can see where it's at, and we'll talk about some more of the details. As you can see, it's a pretty exciting trip. It's a heck of a lot of fun. So let's first look at where this is at, and I'll bring some maps in here so that you can see. It's just outside of Telluride to the east, very, very close to town. There are two parking lots that you can use to do the traverse. The lower one you can get to with a two-wheel drive, and the upper one requires four-wheel drive to get up there. There's a sign that says you can't go up here unless you have high clearance four-wheel drive. Uh, the optimum way is to park one vehicle at the bottom and one vehicle at the top. That way, when you're done with the traverse, you can drive back up and get it. We just walked the road back up to the top parking lot, and it's not bad, it's just kind of boring. And there's a lot of jeepers coming down the road, so you suck a lot of dust. So from the top uh, parking lot there, you cross this bridge and immediately go up and right. It's a steep section of trail, and that lands you on the traverse. And once you're on the traverse, I would 
Well, I would say it would be impossible to get lost, but I've been surprised at this before. So it's very easy to follow. It starts off at a real nice trail, um, going through some trees and gets close to the cliff. And then as it progresses, it gets more and more exposed. It's not long before you come to the first set of cables, and there's a few before the main event. Now the main event is the exposed part of this traverse, where you actually have to climb on the metal rungs, and uh, it's, it's a long way down, a great place to take pictures, and super exciting. After the main event, the trail continues, and again, there's several sections of cable after that. Nothing quite like the main event, but there's a few places that uh, definitely are worth seeing. I suggest doing the whole thing. Some folks do the main event and then turn around and come back. Um, this, this is accepted and fine to do. Um, one of the problems is this is a pretty busy place. And if somebody's coming one way in the main event and you're going the other way, passing them could be very tricky and even dangerous. So I wouldn't suggest that. So let's talk about the gear. If you read up on this, you'll see that it's suggested that you use what's called a lanyard that has um, two carabiners on it. And the reason that there are two is when you get to an anchor, you pass one and then you pass the other. So you're never unclipped from the cable. Now, why is the preferred method using this lanyard? To oversimplify this, um, a cable quite obviously is static. There's no stretch. There's no bungee cord effect to it. If you uh, clip into this cable with slings or even short sections of rope, there is no stretch or give to those either. Not enough. If you were to fall, um, it would be like taking off at a run and just slamming into a brick wall. It's going to be a very sudden stop. So by design, this lanyard is made for an event of a fall. It will give and it will stretch. So it won't hurt you and it will not break. But it's something to take into consideration. The other thing is um, I would highly suggest using a helmet on any rock climb, anywhere, anytime. Uh, there's a big wall above you and just natural rock fall um, could easily come down. So it would be best to follow the suggested method. That is the safest. That's one of those do as I say, not as I do things. Now, if you're not a rock climber and you don't have experience with this, you don't have the harness, you don't have the lanyard, you don't have a helmet, uh, and this is completely new to it, um, I think it would be wise to have, uh, you know, somebody go with you that is dialed in on rock climbing a little bit. If not, there are several guide services there and I do not know anything about them, but I think it would be a very good idea if you're completely unfamiliar with it to go along with someone who does have some experience or hire the guide service that can also provide all the equipment for you. So if you're looking at doing the Via Ferrata, I hope that this uh, information gives you a little bit to go on. It's a great trip. It's super exciting and so much fun. So be safe. Thanks for watching. Until next time, GoPro, stop recording.